Hey guys, this is Shubham. In previous videos in ophthalmology, I have already discussed about the cornea and the sclera, which are the outermost part of our eyeball. And this video, I am talking about the uveal tract and mainly I will talk about the choroid layer. Basically, uveal tract consists of three components, the choroid, ciliary body and the iris. So in this video, I will be talking about the choroid and in further videos, I will talk about the iris and the ciliary body. So talking about the choroid, choroid is the posterior most part of the vascular coat of our eyeball and it extends from the optic disc up to the ora serrata in our eyeball. So talking about diagrammatically, so if I will draw the diagram, so for example, this is the optic disc and For example, this is our eyeball. This portion is the cornea and this portion is the sclera. And I have already talked about them in detail in my previous videos in ophthalma. So, underlying it, we have the choroid layer. So this layer with the red one, this is the choroid one. And further they are making the ciliary bodies and ciliary body finally continues into the flaps called as the iris. So this portion is the choroid which is the most vascular portion of our eyeball and Choroid continues into the ciliary body. So this is the ciliary body over here on both the sides. This is a ciliary body and ciliary body continues into the two flaps on both the sides, one flap on each side. And these are the iris between which the pupil is present over there. So this whole diagram, which means the choroid, ciliary body and iris, they consist of the uveal tract. So uveal tract has three components, choroid, which is this layer, ciliary body and the iris. So uveal tract has these three components. Talking about the choroid, this is the posterior, more, post, posterior most portion of the vascular cord of our eyeball. So this is as, as you can see, this is the most uh, posterior one and this is vascular and also it continues from the optic disc so this is the optic disc and it continues up till the ora serrata. So ora serrata, this portion where the choroid continues into the ciliary body and the junction, this junction is called as, the junction is called as ora serrata. So this is called as the ora serrata. Ora serrata. So the junction between the choroid and the ciliary body is called as the ora serrata. Choroid basically continues from the optic disc up till the ciliary body. So this portion is called the choroid. Further, we have the ciliary body and iris. Now talking about the layers of the choroid, basically choroid has three layers, three major layers. First one is the supracoroid lamina, second one is the stroma of the choroid and third one is the basal lamina. So <clears throat> let's make the diagram and I will try to explain all of these layers in detail and we will further talk about the blood supply to the choroid. So for example, uh, this layer is the sclera, so this layer is the sclera. Underlying it because outermost layer is sclera and inside to the sclera we have the choroid layer. So underlying it we have the layer choroid. Now first layer of the choroid is the supracoroidal lamina. 
for example this one with the green color i have drawn the supraparoidal lamina so this layer is the sclera and this layer is the supraparoidal lamina and potential space between the first layer of the choroid that is the supraparoidal lamina and the sclera the potential space between them so i'm talking about this space which is present between these two layers is the supraparoidal space so this is the supraparoidal space as simple as that so in the supraparoidal space the arteries and nerves are passing by and supplying the blood, blood over there so what kind of arteries and nerves i'm talking about these are the short posterior ciliary arteries as well as long posterior ciliary arteries and nerves so this is the supraparoidal space and this first layer of the choroid is the from the outer side to the inner side first layer of the choroid is the supraparoidal lamina and one more thing about the this layer of the choroid supraparoidal lamina that it is very firmly attached to the sclera but tightly attached to the retina so the choroid layer is not held very strongly to the sclera which is the outer side but is very strongly connect with the retina so this choroid is connected outside with the sclera but connected inside with the retina because inside it they have the retina our eyeball has the retina so more precisely choroid is connected with the retinal epithelium so retinal pigment epithelium of the retina connects the choroid the choroid connects with the on the inner side with the retina it connects with the retinal pigment epithelium so this was the first layer which was the supraparoidal lamina underlying it supraparoidal lamina is made up of the condensed collagen fibers as well as melanocytes and some fibroblasts too okay and underlying the sup supraparoidal lamina above it we have one more layer that is the choroid of the stroma of the choroid so stroma of the choroid further have three more layers in it and these are the hallers layer settlers layer and the corio capillaries layer so for example this one this one was our first layer which was the supraparoidal lamina and the second one layer is for example this one so this layer would be the hallers layer hallers layer where the large blood vessels are present over there i will draw the blood supply too but now right now i am talking about just the layers so this this will be the hallers layer this one okay now further as we go towards the retina so this is the sclera this is the choroid layer and this will be the retina uh, imaginary so further we have one more layer and that would be suppose this is the layer and that will be the settlers layer so this one will be the settlers layer settlers layer so this consist of so this settlers layer consist of the la layers of like blood vessels of the medium sized so medium sized blood vessels are going through the settlers layer large sized blood vessels are coming into the hallers hallers layer so this is the difference between these two layers and further finally we have the capillary layer that is the layer of corio capillaries so these layers are very leaky these are like sinusoids in shape so if i would draw over here so for example this they are the capillaries for example so these are the layer of the corio capillaries so this is the layer of the corio capillaries corio capillary okay now corio capillary is connected with the retina which more precisely with the pigment layer of the retina that is retinal pigment layer so for example here i am drawing the retinal pigment layer and these retinal pigment layers are arranged in the columnar shaped cells see this these are the columnar shaped cells through which our corio capillaries of the choroid 
is connected. So this is the cuboidal shaped layer of the retinal pigment. Retina, that is retinal pigment epithelium. And these are connected to each other. These cells are connected to each other via the tight junctions. So they don't allow a, every substance. So they don't allow any substance to go into the outer layer of the retina. So that makes the blood retinal barrier on the outside. However, retina has two barriers more outside these tight junctions of the retinal pigment epithelium makes the blood retinal barrier more inside if I will talk about the inside. So the endothelial cells of capillaries endothelial cells of the capillaries uh, have the tight junctions and they makes the blood retinal barrier more inner side of the retina and more inner side of the retina. So this was about this is the, about the layers. So the first one this was the sclera. So this was the sclera. And further this layer. So this layer was the suprachoroidal lamina. Suprachoroidal lamina. Okay. Underline uh, above it we have the hollers layer where the uh, large sized blood vessels are innervating there then small sized blood vessels are innervating in the satellite layer then we have the layer of chorio capillaries which are uh, very leaky which provide the nutrition which has been providing the nutrition to the outer layer of the retina because above the retinal pigment epithelium we have the outer layer of retina and uh, above that we have the inner layer of retina so and this layer is the retinal pigment epithelium so this is the retinal pigment epithelium retinal pigment epithelium okay and whole this whole layer is the choroid so basically choroid have three layers and one more layer is present over there between the retinal pigment epithelium and the chorio capillaries and this layer is the basal lamina or we call it as brush membrane so this layer present between the retinal pigment epithelium and the chorio capillaries we have one more layer and which is named as basal lamina or brush membrane So basically we have three layers. The first one is the suprachoroidal lamina. So this was our first layer. Okay. As far as choroid is concerned. Second layer was the. So let me write over here the layers about the choroid. So the choroid layers. Okay. So the first one was our suprachoroidal lamina suprachoroidal lamina the second layer was the uh, stroma of the choroid and the stroma of the choroid further contains three more layers so the first one was the hollers layer settler second was the settlers layer and third was the chorio capillaries layer so we have the uh, stroma of the choroid stroma of choroid which further contains three more layers which further contains three more layers and they are named as the Hollers layer Hollers layer second was the Sacklers layer and the third one was the Chorio capillaries layer Chorio capillaries layer so these are the three and the third layer was the finally one was the basal lamina basal lamina or which is also called as the brush membrane brush or brush membrane.
so these are about the layers first one was the supracoroidal lamina remember the potential space between the supracoroidal lamina and the sclera is called the supracoroidal space where the short and long posterior ciliary arteries and nerves are innervating over there from there they are going inside towards the retina towards the outer side of the retina where the hollers layer is present in the hollers layer the large size blood vessels are present over there further they are divided into the smaller size blood vessels which are present in the sapphires layer then they further continues into the corio capillaries layer which are corio capillaries which are uh, leaky like the sinusoids and further between the retinal pigment epithelium and the corio capillaries we have one more layer that is the brush membrane or basal lamina and from there it helps to get the nutrition from the corio capillaries to the outer layer of the retina so this was about the layers of the retina and let me talk about now the blood supply to the choroid so for an example uh these are the arteries and nerves are going uh, in the supracoroidal space remember and from where these arteries are coming ophthalmic artery actually is the origin of all these arteries for example the posterior short and long uh, arteries posterior short and long ciliary arteries uh, about the central retinal arteries all these arteries are origin are having origin from the ophthalmic artery so basically they are coming from the ophthalmic artery so for example uh, here we have the op uh, ophthalmic artery okay and from here the these are the posterior short ciliary arteries so post posterior short ciliary arteries are coming uh, into the supracoroidal space now from there the large size blood vessels the large side blood vessels but blood vessels are innervating into the hollers layer because hollers layer hollers layer contains the large size blood vessels now from the hollers layer the smaller size the blood vessels are coming into the sacklers layer okay so smaller size blood vessels are coming into the sacklers layer and from there they continues into the corio capillaries and from there they continues into the corio capillaries and corio capillaries as they are leaky providing the nutrition to the outer side of the retina so this is the retina this is the this will be the outer side of the retina further they will have the inner side of the retina in retina uh, in overall retina have the 10 layers i will talk about them when i will discuss about the retina after the after discussing the ovial tract so after this, after correct, I will talk about the iris and ciliary body and then I will continue with the retina. So, this is about the blood supply. Now, this was about the posterior short ciliary arteries, which are giving innervations to the choroid, choroid layer, the different layers of the choroid, and finally gives nutrition to the outer side of the retina, or outer layer of the retina. But this, these posterior short ciliary arteries do not continue. So for example, over here, if I have to draw, this is the ophthalmic artery, for example. And from there, this is the posterior short ciliary artery, posterior short ciliary artery, and from there, they are innervating like this, okay, from the both sides, okay. Now talking about the posterior long ciliary arteries, Posterior short ciliary arteries do not continue into the ciliary bodies and the iris. They do not supply the blood vessels over the blood and the nutrition over there. But the posterior long ciliary arteries are reaching up to the ciliary bodies and further they are giving the blood supply to the iris, so to the ciliary body, to the iris, and uh, some supply to the pupil also. Now, Talking about that one, so for example, over here, I have drawn the, this is the iris for example, and uh, this is the pupil, this is the pupil for example. So if we look our eye from the front, so this is the front view, so now you are looking like that, 
the frontal view of the of our eyeball left or right now the posterior long ciliary arteries are coming from two sides so one from the nasals one from the temporal side and one from the nasal side so for example this is our right eyeball so one posterior long ciliary artery will coming from the temporal side from the ophthalmic artery they are coming from the temporal side and one artery one posterior long ciliary artery is coming through the nasal side and innervating like this from the opposite side so for example this layer continues like this okay and from here also and the anastomose in each other okay and the anastomose with each other and makes over there so for example this is from the temporal side this is from the nasal side okay or this is from the nasal side this is from the temporal side they are uh, coming into the iris and outside the pupil they are anastomosing with each other and forming the major arterial circle so this they form this is the major arterial circle over here so this is the major arterial circle okay now talking about the other blood supply anterior ciliary artery or anterior ciliary you know from where they are coming actually from each side we have the rectus muscle for example this is the superior rectus muscle this is the anterior rectus muscle this is the medial rectus muscle and this is the lateral rectus muscle okay so now from these vessels two arteries that is the anterior ciliary arteries so two arteries will come from each side from the superior from the medial from the inferior but from the lateral side only one anterior ciliary arteries comes into the iris and what they are doing further they are going into the further they are going inside the into the pupil and there they are making the radially they are going inside and further they are making the circular like shape and like ring in shape and this ring is called as the minor arterial circle minor arterial circle minor arterial circle so the posterior long ciliary arteries were making the major arterial circle whereas minor arterial circle is formed by the anterior ciliary arteries so this is the difference between the innervation of the major arterial circle and the minor minor arterial circle so this is about the blood supply of the choroid so now summarizing once again i have talked about the uveal tract uveal tract consists of three components choroid ciliary body and the iris today in this video i have talked about the choroid only and its blood supply choroid have the layers have they have the mainly three layers the suprachoroidal lamina stroma of the choroid and the basal lamina which is also called as the brush brush membrane so the suprachoroidal lamina is attached this is uh, is from the inside this is the brown in color brownish in uh, color and it is very firmly attached to the sclera the choroid is very firmly attached to the sclera and very tightly attached to the retina further uh, i have told you that the stroma of choroid above the suprachoroidal lamina first layer was the suprachoroidal lamina then second layer was the stroma of the choroid which further have three layers the hollers layer the sacklers layer and the corio capillaries layer hollers layer sacklers and corio capillaries layer hollers layer consists of the large size blood vessels or sacklers layer consists of the uh, medium size blood vessels and the corio capillaries have the very very smaller size vessels and corio capillaries are leaky which helps in providing the nutrition to the outer side of the retina okay
okay so after the choriocapillary we have the third layer facial lamina or the breast membrane present between the retinal pigment epithelium and the choriocapillaries okay now breast membrane i have one very uh, specific feature you can say in some of the older peoples there can be the extracellular degeneration over there so there can be the extracellular deposits can be present over there in the breast membrane and that can lead to the reticular degeneration so those extracellular deposits in some older peoples they are often seen in the older peoples only older age peoples so some kind of extracellular deposits can be accumulated over there in the breast membrane and that can lead to the retinal degeneration now so the basal lamina is the last layer the breast membrane so the choroid have specifically three layers the suprachoroidal lamina is from the choroid and the basal lamina that is the breast membrane now talking about the blood supply to the choroid uh, long and short posterior ciliary arteries are innervating the choroidal layers so for example here is the posterior short ciliary arteries they are only confined up till this ora sedata they are not giving the blood supply to the choroidal ciliary body whereas long posterior ciliary arteries are going inside up to the uh, iris and they are making the major arterial circle and minor arterial circle is forming with the help of the anterior ciliary arteries so these short posterior ciliary arteries were going inside the choroidal layers in the hollers layer then the setters layer then making the choroidal capillaries and providing the nutrition further furthermore now talking about the venous drainage venous drainage as far as over here from the uh, choroid and from the ciliary body they are coming out for example these are the vertigos veins they are the four vertigos vein in our eyeball through these four vertigos vein the blood is coming out from our eyeball so these are for example these are the four vertigos vein to showing you explain in explanatory fashion so through these four vertigos veins the deoxygenated blood will be come out from these four vertigos veins so this was about the venous drainage so this was about the overall features of the choroid and <clears throat> about the blood supply to the choroid and the uh, arterial supply and the venous venous drainage so i hope you like this video on the choroid and <clears throat>